move to talk. I want to introduce you to Noah Wall. He is an old friend of mine. He used to be the executive uh, vice president for FreedomWorks. And in that job, he did so much to try to preserve liberty and really built up the Freedom Caucus during that time as well. He also worked on Ken Cuccinelli's, he was his political director when he was running. And now Noah is serving as, what is your title now? Um, Executive Vice President of Policy and Government Affairs for the State Financial Officers Foundation. So you work with state treasurers across the country. And yeah. I was on a call with Noah last week talking about natural asset companies, which is a new awful threat to Americans' liberty, our private property, um, basically a takeover of American lands through the Security Exchange Commission. And he did such a great job just kind of breaking down what it was and what we can do about it. And as I called him today to start this um, call, this, this recording, breaking news came forth. So we're going to talk about that. But Noah, if you would just first give us, tell us the gist of what national asset companies are and what we need to know about them. Absolutely. So natural asset companies are... Um an entirely new idea that is, so this was introduced last fall uh, through the Securities and Exchange Commission. And the way it worked is the um, New York Stock Exchange put in a request for the Securities and Exchange Commission to allow for an entirely new class of company. These companies are called natural asset companies and their goal is to financialize nature. And that I'm going to explain what that means here in a second. But the goal is to um, the goal that they're setting forth with is to be able to lease huge tracts of land. Um, and in in the listing, they are calling for leasing of um, both public and private land, everything from. Um, conservation easements on private property to national parks. So it would encompass a huge amount of both public and private land. And the way that this would work is these companies would gather the, um, the rights to the land in, in order to theoretically care for it. But ultimately to profit off of things like natural processes such as photosynthesis or carbon sequestration or the the water that's cleaned um you know by natural processes on the land and what they are looking to do is implement a new type of accounting standard that was put forward by the United Nations just a few years ago that would allow them to um, assign monetary value to natural processes. So what, at the end of the day, it's not entirely clear how they would make money, but what they would be doing is voodoo accounting that would allow them to say that because they own, you know, 10,000 acres of land, and that land is doing X, Y, and Z in terms of natural processes, they're going to assign monetary values to the to what the land does. And so what it is doing is financializing nature. And that's incredibly dangerous because nature is something that's owned by all of us, by Americans. And what they're trying to do is assign completely made up arbitrary you know, financial values to that and in order to somehow profit off of it. Now, these natural asset companies, as I said, you know, it's not entirely clear how they would make money. In the listing to the Securities and Exchange Commission, they um, specifically say that they want to make money selling carbon credits. Okay, well, that's a scam in and of itself, but I understand that scam. They also are looking to make money off of ecotourism, which given that they're looking to lease natural parks, I mean, that just seems like you know, something that already happens, it's called visiting a natural, you know, national park. Um, so um, that's one. And then what's really telling though, and what I, I think is important to get into is what, and I think this really drives the agenda behind these companies, is that what you're not allowed to do on the land. So part of the listing 
specifically states what you're not allowed to do on this land that, that's being administered by these NACs, these natural asset companies. So what you're not allowed to do is any productive economic use on the land. You're not allowed to farm on the land. So if it's a, you know, um, if it's a B BLM land, you know, you might currently have cattle grazing on the land that's allowed, uh, it's allowed use and it's something that ranchers across the country take advantage of. Um, you're not allowed to, to ranch on that land anymore. You're not allowed to mine. You're not allowed to drill. So you're not allowed to do anything that is remotely economically productive. And that's a huge deal because huge portions of public lands are currently allowed under you know, this multi-use um, framework for the Department of Interior. You're allowed to actually use good bits of federal government land for productive use. But under these NACs, it's a scheme, I believe, to go ahead and um, and withdraw that uh, withdraw that ability to um, to do that. So what you're going to end up with is under this scheme would be huge portions of land are not going to be eligible for any use whatsoever, which is economic economically detrimental, but also I think a huge national security risk. So these NACs are. Part of the scheme is that they are going to be publicly traded companies, so listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So because they're publicly traded, anyone in the world can invest in them. So you could have, say, China or Saudi Arabia or some foreign entity invest. You now have an investable product that locks up American natural resources which is absolutely insane. So if you're China and you don't want the United States manufacturing, you know, uh, minerals or, um, you know, if you're Saudi Arabia and don't want competition for, you know, natural gas or for uh, oil drilling, you now have an investable asset that can then go out and lease federal land and remove that ability um, to be used for that purpose. So it's a national security threat. As I mentioned, it uses voodoo accounting to that just are, assigns completely made up values um, to you know to to natural processes that nature. Um, so they're trying to financialize nature in this, and then at the end of the day as well, they are going to go ahead and um, you know and do all of this without a single congressional hearing on it. So this would be, com it's completely under the radar. And the only reason we know about this is because of a few land rights activists who happen to notice it. So, um, so anyway, so that's, that's the, the scheme in, um, just in real brief. Absolutely. One thing, Noah, if I, I wanted to say, I know there was some talk about easements. So you may have private property that that's not for sale, but aren't these other, these NACs can come in and they can buy the public lands or whatever. And let's say it, you have an easement next to your property, they can scooch over and grab that up as well, which would then affect what you can do on your land. Is, am I knowing that? Yes, no, no, you're absolutely right. I neglected to mention that. Um, so that's a big deal. So in the East Coast, so uh, in particular, they uh, a lot of public, a lot of private land is held in conservation easement. It's something that's done, you know, basically the exchange is, I agree not to develop the land, but I can use it for certain purposes, but, you know, in exchange, you get like a tax, you know, tax reduction on your property taxes. So that's been around for a long time. What these NACs would do is go into these um, conservation trusts and lease the land directly from them. So you would end up not being allowed to use your land that you have in conservation easements um, for purposes that you currently are using them for. So if you currently ranch on your land on the East Coast or farm it, um, in some cases, you would no, you potentially no longer be allowed to do that. So it would be a huge private property rights issue as well. So Noah, thank you for that explanation. Now, for people to do something about this, where we were all, it was kind of slowly trickling out, I think around November is kind of when I first started hearing about it. And then now, there's more and more information. So tell us what the Securities Exchange Commission, they what they were going to do with their comment period and how they messed around with that. Yeah. So the, originally the comment period started at the end of September and it closed in October. We were able to get them to reopen it. Um, I think they realized that they, you know, they did a 21 day comment period, which is unusually short. 
And the comments um, were to whether they were were going to, they wanted to know what people, how people felt about opening up this new investment class. Yeah. So they wanted to, so they instituted a rulemaking period that closed at the end of October, um, asking for public comment on this. But again, no one really knew about it at the time. We actually found out about it after that comment period had closed. So we instituted a process. We initially, so we got them to delay making the decision on it. Then we pushed them and in the end of the very end of the year, right before Christmas, they reopened the comment period for another three weeks. That period um, was slated to end tomorrow. Um, and but there, because they reopened it and Americans had started to hear about it, there was an outpouring of thousands of comments into their website, um, which you can find out, um, you know, about how to um, go to NAC, how to, you know, get involved with NACs from, um, you know, there's a number of different places you can go, but the um, um, American Stewards of Liberty uh, website has great resources. The Utah Treasurer's website has great resources. You can find it on our State Financial Officers Foundation Twitter account. We've got links to it. Um, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, that comment period was slated to close tomorrow, but we do have some breaking news on that, it appears. So tell us, this is so huge. We're so yeah. excited about this. This is, and this stuff never happens. When you deal with these rulemakings, they're almost always a foregone conclusion. So it's a big deal when you have, first of all, an open, reopened comment period. And then now, which literally just happened right as we began this call, um, we uh, we just heard that this uh, New York Stock Exchange has withdrawn their application to be able to list NACs. So that is a massive victory. Again, these victories on these rulemakings almost never happened. So it's a huge deal. It's a testament to the grassroots pressure that was put on both the, the Securities and Exchange Commission and the New York Stock Exchange. And I actually suspect that the New York Stock Exchange withdrew the application because they were um, they became convinced that this was not going to be approved. So it's a huge deal. Again, wins like this do not happen often. And so Everyone who was involved in this really um, deserves a lot of credit because this is, it's a big deal. Yes. So that's great. Yeah. What I wanted you to mention too, I mean, that is so exciting. Now, I, I don't think it's over. I think they'll change the name or, you know, how they, they will. do they'll come back another way. Are there NACs or traded companies like this in other countries? Or is this a brand new thing that the whole world, they've never seen this before? Um. This is so very interesting that you mentioned that this is something. So they have implemented some version of this in Guatemala. They have experimented with these accounting standards in certain countries in Africa. Um, and if you remember, these are the types of accounting standards that have resulted in African countries, you know, absolutely destroying their economy. So um, it, it is not completely new, but in terms of the size and scale, it absolutely is. Okay. Um, so it, it is, um, you know, the way that they work is they, they implement various aspects in various countries and then take whether it works or doesn't, and it never works because it's communism, um, is communism just using our capitalist system against us, um, but the way that they go ahead and do this is they'll implement one part of the process and then they use that, whether it works or doesn't, to implement their full scheme. And so we will see this again. Um, it might not be through a publicly listed company. It might just be through the Biden administration because they've been doing work on this through the Bureau of Land Management and the Department of Interior to try and privatize a certain aspects of the land. Um, and in other, you know, so we will see this again. And so now Americans are prepared on this, you know, new part of the scam. And we will make sure that we keep everyone updated on how this comes back out. Because it, when you're dealing with the left, you're always playing whack-a-mole. Um, you know, they have more bad ideas than they know what to do with, and they never stop. So, um, you know, I, I'm excited to, to see the next mole and help all the grassroots out there whack it. That's great. Well, I want to praise you too for the great job. I know you got at least 23 state treasurers across the country to sign on um, saying, hey, we don't like this idea. You need to put this to rest. And um, I'm sure you can be gaining more signatures uh, for the next round because I agree with you that it's coming. 
Um, thank you so much, Noah. I look forward to hearing more progress on this. And I'm so excited about the breaking news. Glad you were here to Absolutely. share it with us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being on and I'm happy to be back anytime. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.